Again, um, a pleasant day to all of you. And of course, we are going to discuss about the tourism market segmentation. It's about topic seven. And uh, for this continuation, let me first just introduce to you this topic, uh, the market segmentation. So if we talk about market, these are the people that is behind a purchase and they are the one who will be the target for whatever products and services we would like to render to people. And we used to segment the market by means of different preference like age, um, like, uh, of course, the, uh, the salary, the... Um, according to religion and all the segments that can be um, identified, you know, what kind of market uh, we would like to uh, focus on. So on this tourism market segmentation, the learning objective here is of course to uh, discuss the different uh, importance of segmentation of the market tourism, and of course uh, the major approaches that are used to segment the tourism market. Okay, first thing is let's define market segmentation. Okay, according to research, this market segmentation is a, a, a research that determines how your organization divides its customers or cohort into smaller groups based on their characteristics. So meaning that once we do the research, we need to determine whether what kind of organization I, um, the organization divides its customer uh, in terms of uh, different characteristics, such as example, the age, the income, personality, traits, and behavior. Okay, let's take a look on the different types of market segmentation. We have the geographic segmentation. And if we talk about geographic segmentation, it creates different target customer uh, with regards of the group based on geographical boundaries. So meaning that uh, if we're looking into a different market because of geographic segmentation, so these are the customer that based on the boundaries of geographic, like for example, if we would like to target a within Kabiti area, if we want to target our research into um, a Bulacan area. So those are the different uh, geographical features uh, based on the uh, target uh, customers we want, okay? We also have the psychographic segmentation and this is based on the psychological aspect of consumer behavior. So um, it divides the market according to the style, according to the lifestyle, uh, according to the personality traits, values and opinions, and even the interests of the consumer. And we have also the behavioral segmentation, wherein it, div it divides the market into the different decision-making patterns, such as, for example, how they, um, they um, purchase the, the consumption ability, of course, the usage and the lifestyle as well. While demographic segmentation, it is based, of course, on the category like age, like the family size, the education, the income, the race, the gender, the occupation, nationality, and more. So these are the type of market segmentation wherein we try to categorize the different market based on the um, based on the different components of the market segmentation. Then we have now the specialized segment tourism wherein we try to categorize them as business and professional travelers. So for the business and professional travelers, they are the bread and butter of the industry because a price and seasonal fluctuation less common than with leisure travelers. So travels tends to be an elastic. So globalization has meant an increase in an international business travel. So this is considered as the third largest expense for corporation, okay, these travelers. Then we have the incentive travelers. And if you talk about incentive travelers, these are the people who deserve to have a reward. They are the rewarding employees for good work with all the expense paid trip by their company. Um, we have also the research show free vacation is more motivating incentive than money. So they used to um, uh, motivate people to do more a good um, good job no? for uh, for this kind to have a free vacation. It is more than the money. So they have also the incentive travelers were in uh, trips are usually first class and um, all of the um, all of the. Uh, 
The features for this uh, incentive travel as incentive travelers are organized by the incentive tour operators. And then we have also the mature travelers and this kind of traveler immense in the market for tourism uh, for the pop um, population age 55 and older. So this age group is presently the largest and fasting growing age. So, um, as you can see with the word mature traveler, so these are the people that is uh, fully matured and they are, uh, fully understand uh, travel traveling no? for, um, for a short period or, or long-term period. So this mature traveler spend more than younger travelers and account 80% of all commercial vacation travel. So these older adults are wealthier no, and have more free time to the other group. And it can be divided to uh, three segments. We have the sightseeing uh, travelers, we have the enthusiastic travelers, and of course, the family focused travelers. So these are the mature traveler, as they call them. Okay, we have a special interest traveler wherein they are particular on the seasons, not travel in off season period, providing revenue when business is needed most. So, meaning that this kind of traveler, they have the special interest to travel. They can be divided into three segments the, those people who love adventure ecotourism and sports tourism. So we have also the Travel Industries Association of America that estimate the nearly 40% of the US adults are sports event traveler, okay. Then another is the single traveler, okay. These are the person who live alone and travel alone with or without companion. So all shapes and sizes, many social trends have increased numbers of singles. And of course, they have single supplement making their travel without a companion costly. So this is very uh, affordable for all the single because they travel it, uh, they travel alone and of course on their own convenience. Um, ways to market the product. So the ways to market the product is that first, you have to identify your audience. So meaning that you have to know your audience most likely to buy your product is step one in the learning how to market a new product. So know the target market. The audience is the target market. So next is uh, research the competition. So studying your competition can tell also you a lot about the customer who buys similar product where they can shop, and how much they are willing to spend. So um, it's important to, um, to research the competition, whether the buying capacity of your target market can uh, fully align with what kind of, um, of products and services you would like to convey with your audience. So it's important uh, to see the competition, how much is the, uh, the um, capacity or capability of the market that you want to focus. And then next, is a ways to market product again is to define your marketing tactics. Of course, it's important to see all the tools and channels that you will use, that you will need once you know who your customer is and what your competition is up to. So you're ready to assemble the right marketing tactics and sales channel to reach the buyers. So it's important class to market the product. It is the craft, your, um, your product, the craft of a compelling uh, story. So a product story that solves a problem or elicits an emotion or resonates with shoppers, converts them to buyer and make your brand memorable. Of course, um, it is a one way to market your product. So if you market the product, it is important that um, the problem, the current problem or the gap into your research that uh, compensate, of course, uh, what kind of uh, product that your consumer needs. So in other words, it converts them to buyer and makes your brand memorable. So it's important class that there's this compelling story with your craft. Now, don't just uh, present the product. Um, without any appeal. So of course, you make a story, you make something that the product can um, can be available and uh, they are interested to buy it because there's a value out of the product. And then we have also the um, ways to market the product by plan for long-term success. So if you, if, you, um, if you want to market your product, you have to look into the long-term success. So the marketing product, uh, the marketing of your product is um, 
something to do with occasional sprints. So planning includes mix of long and short term sales channel and outreach tactics. Okay, so meaning that when you market the product, so you have to look into the uh, effective um, planning schedule for a long and short term channels for this product success. Okay, and then we have also the tourist satisfaction. So once your tourist is satisfied, you have, of course, the different characteristic of the offerings no, that you have. So the main objective here is to satisfy your tourists and to satisfy your tourists uh, or the tourists uh, or the target consumers is that you have to make a scale or satisfaction scale ranging from delighted to terrible from fully satisfied or not satisfied at all meaning you should have your like it scale here wherein you can measure the satisfaction of the tourist and as um um of course in assessing the satisfaction there are actually problem in assessing satisfaction and the first uh problem is that Tourists are unable to assess objectively and uh, the characteristic of this product offering, and they often add their own interpretation. So, meaning that very object, uh, subjective, no? So, um, not objective, meaning that it is more on their own interpretation. So, that's the common problem. But, of course, the second problem also is that consumers normally do not simply sum up their evaluation of each characteristic and do not give an equal weight to each characteristic assume um, and, and summations a scale is not uh, being achieved. So uh, here it's important also that uh, when assessing satisfaction, uh, there should be a uh, sum up on the evaluation. Okay, and then third is when the measurement of customer satisfaction is based on the destination attributes and it must be calculated. Score depends on the particular choice of attributes, including the measurement instrument. So these are the problems no, in assessing satisfaction. That's why we have to be uh, we have to make sure that when you do the assessment, it must be clear to the audience. Okay, it must the objective must be clear. And um, of course, it must be calculated properly. Then we have also um, the uh, different uh, satisfaction um, characteristic wherein um, it's important for us to validate the satisfaction based on the uh, proper criteria. So we have to make sure that we follow those criteria in order to assess the satisfaction. Again, for this, um, Marketing the product and dif uh, to identify the different market segment is important class, especially that uh, we want our market uh, to be upgraded and, of course, uh, to influence more of the market uh, towards successful product development. Okay, so again, this is all about the market segmentation. And once we know already the market in our product, it only means that we can prioritize and focus the things that we need to provide for them. Okay, thank you so much.